<laughs> Welcome to Last Podcast on the Left, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Marcus Parks. I'm here with Henry Zabrowski. Hi, hi. And Ed Larson. Miami. Tell me what you know about cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> we are going to Miami. Benvenido a Miami. Um, it's actually really sad. It's a sad trip to Miami. It's yeah. a sad, which is there. I honestly, Half of them are. Hey, really? Because <laughs> most of the time, it's bye, Grandma. Yeah. <laughs> Have fun, Grandma. Look at shuffleboard. Look, look. No, there's a tree. Well, those are trips to Boca. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I will say that I think the saddest show we've ever had was in Miami. Yeah. Why would you go? You're in Miami, oh my God. Florida. It's you're going to go to a town for comedy. You're going to go to a live podcast recording everyone's on their phones i've done stand up down there no one's paying attention everyone's fucking 40 minutes late it's too sexy there's like literally a nightclub dj laz was playing and like every time the doors open you just heard a better party and it was just like people laughing more loving life being like fuck that fat guy you hear that from the outside i remember we were on stage and i was sick and like we're in miami and i'm like drinking day quill straight from the bottle to make it through the fucking show yeah sad sad play for me at least for you yeah. but honestly I felt the heat as soon as you walked out that hotel room you feel like your hips kind of swivel it's like I felt the Polish creak you know what I mean Because <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> as my knees started swiveling back and forth well let's get to Andrew Kunan in part 3 let's wrap this fucker up yeah it's see what Mr. Kunani does now. I've been trying to think of where Kunani comes. Is that a shaggy thing? It feels like something shaggy would say. I just think, I think Henry made it up and like half stole it from something else. That's I think my it's, whole career. I think it's, I think it's Kunani. <laughs> well, know? yeah, somebody, I, someone said maybe it's because of the Steven Seagal song where he go, he sings all about the, you know, love and the Punani in the song because he thinks he's half like Jamaican. Yeah. For some reason. But I, for, um, for death. In that movie, he's half Jamaican. But I will say, because again, he's a good actor. But it's, I, <laughs> just put it as Kunani because it's fun for me. Okay. So when we last left Andrew Kunanen, he just murdered a Civil War cemetery caretaker named William Reese, simply so he could steal Reese's truck for the next leg of his journey. This was Kunanen's fourth victim, and soon after he was officially linked to Reese, Kunanen became a national true crime sensation. God, he was excited about it. He was so fucking... He kept all his newspaper clippings. Yeah. He'd watch all the news reports. Now, as we said last episode, two of Kunanen's friends had called the FBI to tell them that he was likely headed for Miami and that he had a grudge against Gianni Versace. And as it was, Kunanen arrived in Miami not too long after the murder of William Reese. Ah, uh, South Beach. Mm. And I got some select quotes from the Vulgar Favors book. That it's is, zero. it's disgusting. But here we go. With forbidden seething of Vano waiting to open up nearby, <laughs> South Beach is a riot. Of loose lux and easy sleeves. Where dancing the night away amid hundreds of tanned, undulating bodies is a standard prelude to hot, anonymous sex. <laughs> I mean, it's always been that. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, since like the first like Native Americans found it, they were like, man, this place makes us horny as fuck. I think Miami was actually founded by an alligator and a thong. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> trying to suck dick. And here's another quote. South Beach is about being Venezuelan, mm -hmm. 21, and having designer pubic hair. Whoa, 21 <laughs> is generous. The <laughs> <laughs> hey there, hey, it's a cool if I get in here, yeah. The name's Winston McGonagall, yeah. And, uh, yeah, is it weird? I know my pubic hair is just in a diamond shape. It was hard to get the LV in there. <laughs> Well, using another one of his fake IDs, Kunanen set himself up on Miami Beach in a room at the Normandy Plaza Hotel under the alias of Andrew Da Silva. And Normandy Plaza Hotel sounds fancy. It's $35.75 a night. Yeah, no. In South Beach, that's not good. No, 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 no. But it was only a block from the beach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was easily affordable, at least at first, because if you'll remember, Kunanen had left Lee Miglin's home with $10,000 in cash after that third murder. Which he quickly blew. Yes. Now, as far as Andrew Kunanen's movements around Miami went for the next five weeks or so. Actually, that's what I actually didn't realize is how long yeah. he was in Miami. Yeah. He was there for a while. Yeah, it chilling. Was, yeah, five or six weeks, somewhere around there. I think, it, I think it ended up being almost a month by the end of it. I think it was seven weeks uh, that he was in just fucking around. You could see how he thought he was getting away with it. Yeah. Well, 
after all that time in Minneapolis, he had to get his tan back. I mean, of course, <laughs> but he, he couldn't go outside. He was on America's Most Wanted. Yes. But that's the thing is that America's Most Wanted wasn't that, like, it, it was a big show, but it would it took a fucking, as I'm about to get into it, but it took a month for him to be recognized the first yeah. time. The problem is, is that they what they said is that I know that he didn't have a tan because multiple times he tried to go places, the word that people used to describe him was pasty. Yeah. Really? And America's Most Wanted was a big show in Florida. Because oh, yeah. of Walsh. Walsh is a Florida guy. That's right. And a lot, I would imagine a lot of the people hailed from Florida. Yeah. <laughs> no, or end up there <laughs> yeah exactly it's great it's called pulling a Bundy for a reason <laughs> now as far as Andrew Cunanan's movements around Miami went for the next five weeks or so they had to be put together by people who came out of the woodwork after Gianni Versace's assassination became the biggest news story in America but when Andrew first arrived in Miami the average person might not have known anything about the case if they didn't read Time Magazine or as we said if they didn't watch America's Most Wanted therefore plenty of local men had stories of Andrew dancing in gay clubs, swigging vodka crayons, and trying to pick up dudes. He definitely, uh, the word was, is that he had a hustler vibe. Yeah. I, I feel like this is one of those things that was like, you know, I, we can't really speak towards the hustling gay community. Sure. We have no fucking clue. But you can speak towards the hustler community at a whole. You oh, know, sure. Like, especially in South Florida. They're everywhere. Well, that's what they, they, everybody says. Like, he stood out like a sore thumb yeah. as a guy that pulls fucking tricks for a living. Yeah. And I think he was a little bit more obvious. Like, it, he could get away with that in California, but for some reason in Miami, just nobody was having any of it. Well, he's, he's lost his edge. And he's also paunchy yeah. at this point. But he paid weekly at the Normandy Plaza Hotel and cleaned his own room so the maids had little reason to enter. I think one of them said she cleaned the room three times in the entire time that Andrew stayed there. In further proof that Cunanan was cognizant of the fact that he was still on the run, he ate at cheap restaurants and shopped at a nearby Walgreens. But he still made time for runs to the adult bookstore. According to an employee at one store called the Pleasure Emporium, Andrew was always well-dressed, well-spoken and very nice. Yes, but they said any attempt at further conversation, he shut down. How often are we engaging with the clientele at the sex shop? <laughs> you either talk too much or not at all. Yeah, I'd say loose lips sink ships, friend. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if you talk a lot at the sex shop, then there's something you know, there's something wrong with you. I think eventually you do become an employee. Yeah. Well, as I've said before, like I had a very short run at the pleasure chest sure. in New York City, huh? and in that bite, you're actually encouraged to talk to the. People. Oh, because actually, it's very I didn't high. Know. It's very classy. It's very high class. That makes total sense. But they said his favorite magazines were Jocks and Inches, <laughs> which also could be a football magazine. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen any of his Sunday. Yeah, Fourth and Inches, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but just because most people didn't recognize Andrew, that didn't mean that nobody recognized him. On June 11th, after Andrew had been in Miami for almost a month, an employee at a sandwich shop called Miami Subs. Miami oh, Subs. Love Miami Subs. Miami yeah. Subs. Miami, Miami Subs was amazing. They always had a Street Fighter 2. <laughs> I, I, I would get the old cheese steaks were great. Yeah, they the got cheese curly steaks. fries. It was wonderful. Did they have fruit punch? They had like a proprietary oh, yeah. drink. They definitely had their own fruit punch. Yeah. And then like slowly but sure, Nathan's bought them. Yeah. And then they started to turn into Miami Grill and serve salads and shit. Like and a you're like, what? Fucking pussy. Yeah. Yeah, what is this shit? I'm yeah. here for a fucking to get sick. Yeah, I remember. It was a great place for my mom to bring me to forget my dad wasn't around. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. How was the tuna sub? Do you have the tuna sub? Of course I had the tuna sub. Yeah, my mom got the tuna sub a lot. Yeah, yeah. And It's called I, the Kunani now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is what Andrew Kunani got. Yeah. Oh, you got Here's a tip for your tuna sub fans. Put a little mustard. Mustard. Oh yeah, sure, little, sure, sure. Little, 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 like one strip of mustard. I also like sauce. crunching up barbecue chips on top of a tuna sub. You're fucking genius. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm this, fat for a reason. <laughs> well, this guy at Miami Subs, he recognized Kunan and, and he called 911 before taking his time making Andrew's tuna sub. Slurry it up. Get that meat slurry on there. Because <laughs> he's, I, oh, yeah, tuna sub being your favorite is a thing. Yeah, it's, it's a choice. It is very much a choice. Mm. But, the cops still weren't fast enough because by the time they arrived, Andrew was already gone. Unbeknownst to them, Andrew's hideout at the Normandy Plaza Hotel was less than three blocks away. Teflon, baby! <laughs> <laughs> 
But it could be that Andrew noticed all the police activity in the vicinity of the hotel, because he soon began spending more time in his brunette woman persona. Hmm. In fact, Kunanim was so natural in his portrayal that the staff at the Normandy thought that he'd simply stopped leaving his room. 